everyone and welcome back to the series where I test out of the ordinary guitar pedals. Today we're looking at the most peculiar guitar pedals and I've got to say I feel like I really stepped up the strange for this video. When I started this series I came up with the bright idea that instead of numbering the episodes numerically I would title them using different synonyms for weird. As long as thesaurus.com is up and running I'll keep looking for these whacked out stomp boxes. But before we get into it a quick word from today's sponsor SamuraiGuitarTheory.com which is where you can find my course teaching the rudiments of music theory and how they apply to guitar. I've got a back to school sale going on over there. If you use promo code back to school, you'll save 45% until September 16th. I'll put links to that as well as more information on any of these pedals in the description. Let's get into the madness. The first pedal for today is a Critter and Guitari video scope. This seemingly innocuous little black box is one of the most interesting effects that I've ever come across. Here's what it sounds like when I'm not playing through it. And here's what it sounds like when I am playing through the pedal. As you can hear, there is no difference whatsoever. That's because it doesn't do anything to the audio. To demonstrate what this little fellow does in fact do, come with me to my living room. I've brought you down here because this is where I have my TV. I've taken my guitar signal, sent it into the pedal, and then taken a video output into the television giving us this glitchy display. The video scope takes my audio and uses it to affect this texture. What you see on TV is essentially my guitar sound. Let's see what it sounds like with some music. How cool is that? There are a bunch of different settings for what this video can look like. Here's another. I don't know what kind of black magic is going on here, but I'm into it. Here's one more. This is a totally different type of guitar pedal, if you want to even call it that, especially since it can be used with any other electric instrument. I can imagine doing a live show with a bunch of TVs set up around the stage connected to a few of these, which would create a really engaging aesthetic. My only complaint is that they're discontinued, they're hard to find, and when you do, they're quite costly. Next up, we have the Air Trash Pedal by Mataverse Electronics. What really drew me into this pedal is the description on their website. The Air Trash is a pedal for guitar or bass that sounds like absolute garbage. I was breadboarding an idea and happened upon some absolutely sickening sounds, like really bad, but couldn't stop playing it. My man, you are speaking my language. I think the best thing we can do here is just give it a whirl. Yeah, it's awful, but in the good kind of way. Let's talk about the flavor profile. It hits you with a nasty compressed fuzz that devolves into a feedback reminiscent of the sound my computer made that time the sound card died. Here's another example, but this time I'm going to pair the air trash with my weird Schecter bass slash guitar hybrid thing. ugly sounding thing, but in some scenarios, bad is good. I probably wouldn't use it if I was playing jazz at an old folks home, but if I was playing experimental heavy rock at an old folks home, then I probably would. Moving on, we've got the Morpheus capo pedal. It's a fairly simple concept. It changes the pitch of your guitar in the same way that a traditional capo would. Here's a normal open G. And here's what it sounds like when I turn on the Morpheus to the third fret setting. So why not compare this to a traditional capo? Here's a little something with my capo on the fifth fret. And here's the same thing using the pedal. To me, 
It doesn't sound good at all. It sounds like a horrible processed digital signal, which is exactly what it is. I don't really care for it. You can buy this normal capo, which sounds better for 10 bucks, or you can buy this thing for a couple hundred dollars. Pretty easy choice there, pal. One redeeming element though, is if you turn it on and off really quickly, you can get a cool glitchy effect. Alternatively, you can set it up to the 12th fret and get a pitched up thing going, which is kind of neat too. Realistically, if I wasn't making this video, I would never buy this. Next, we've got the Cyclops 2 by ZA Electronics. This thing is a bit of a mystery. There's no serial number, it's hand painted, there's no brand name, and there's no official website for it. What little I turned up from my research told me that it's a Swedish company that may or may not have changed its name. I'm thinking it's just some guy who does it all out of his basement. But either way, it's a delay pedal with a twist. Right now, I've got it turned on and it sounds like any other delay. Also attach this light to it. This light shines over top of a tiny little sensor. When it's picking up the light, it makes one sound, and when it's not picking up the light, it makes another sound. I don't know exactly what's happening. My best guess is that when the light is in place, it triggers a wave that goes through the delay signals. Here's how it sounds when I mess around with that light position. Alternatively, you can set the light to an adjustable strobe, which gives this effect. Like with a lot of these pedals, you can dial down the weird for more subtle effect, which in the right settings could be quite nice. The basic delay setting is also quite pleasant by itself. The most interesting aspect is the ability to move the light around, which you can't really do when you're playing guitar, so I'm not sure there's much practical use. But it is peculiar, and it is in fact a guitar pedal, so it fits perfectly with today's theme. Last for today is the Signal Diverter by Out of the Box Effects, and this is probably the world's simplest pedal. When you turn it on, it routes your signal through these two wires. Right now there's nothing connecting the wires, so the circuit is incomplete. As you can hear, no sound. But I can attach these clamps to anything that conducts electricity, allowing me to send my guitar signal through some strange things. For example, let's see what it sounds like when I send my guitar through a metal slide. Now let's try a pickle. You know, it sounds about the same as normal. And that's a quality pickle. And last, I'm gonna attach these clamps to my earrings and send my guitar signal through myself. It's a bit buzzy and rather painful. My review, this is the most pointless thing I've ever bought. There is no practical use for it whatsoever, but I also kind of enjoy the fact that I can now run my guitar through a chunk of ham if I ever so desire. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the five most peculiar guitar pedals and my thoughts about them. Remember, if you're looking to learn the rudiments of music theory and how they apply to guitar, SamuraiGuitarTheory.com is the best resource in the entire world, according to a totally biased source, which is myself. It's a 10 video, seven lesson course that's been professionally animated to make it easy and intuitive. There are quizzes, documents, and a list of things to practice so you can apply the info to your guitar playing. A one-time payment gives you lifetime access and it's on sale for 45% off until September 16th with promo code back to school. Thank you all for watching. To get caught up in this series, hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for a wide range of guitar and music related content. If you wanna check out that Sammy G merch line, you can find that over at shopsamuraiguitarist.com. Until next time, I'm Samurai Guitarist and I will see you again soon.